I think I actually said that one bucket makes six bags. When you divide it out into the four buckets, where you know it's a little bit less half full of grain, then you add the coffee solution, you're gonna get three bags per bucket. Let's see, I have to slide this over a little bit. Got pretty much almost all of it out of there. Now we're going to let this steam off for five minute <clears throat> for five minute intervals for a total of 20 minutes. Now, if you had a, a longer space or even an area to put a long table, you could use uh, double the amount of uh, strainers here, and you could cut the time in half because you don't have so much. Uh, piled up. So we're going to set a kitchen timer. Now since we have several batches we're going to do, I can go ahead and start boiling up the next batch. But first I want to rinse out any bits of grain with some lukewarm water at least. You don't want to use cold water on a hot kettle. It will have a chance of damaging it. Just kind of just give it a general rinse out. You'll see too that the inside of my kettle has a whole bunch of old caramelized grain stuff. Even on the bottom, it's kind of black. I never scrub the bottom of it, and it never really cakes up, so uh, I don't really consider it a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and load the next batch and keep this up, and uh, I'll show you what we're going to do after five minutes. All right, it's time to give our grain a toss. Now you see here I have another five gallon bucket with a uh, little bit larger mouth opening. And we're just gonna dump our grain into the bucket. This is really the easiest way I think to do it. And you can see why I say, if you just have the smaller strainer, it's a little bit easier to get them in there. I would get some other ones, but I still have these, and I'll probably use them until they break. As you can see, they're on their way. So you, you see all five strainers pretty much fills up the, uh, the bucket. Then I'm going to take it and just kind of give it a, a shake into the strainers, and that effectively tosses it. shake the, uh, the pile flat. And you see it's already steaming off hard again. Now like I said, you see some of this grain. If we give it a squish, you'll see that it's like a translucent white. You can see it's very wet on the inside. That's how we want it. Also you can even observe your grain too and see how many split ones you have. You always get some but if like we're talking about a quarter of your grain or half of the grain is split, you're probably not gonna wanna use it. And you wanna try again on the next batch. All right, so I'm going to give these another toss, like I said, every five minutes for a total of 20 minutes. And then uh, I'll show you how to load them into the bags. Now we are ready to load up our bags. Don't forget too to keep track of the time on your kettle. You see I was using the same timer. I usually go after the 20 minutes of uh, shaking these up and tossing them. You're just adding you know, another 30 minutes onto your timer. 20 to 30 minutes you know it's gonna come up to a boil again. Okay, so you see here these are the Myco bags. I get these from fungi.com. You see they're long and gusseted, which means it has it folded inward like that. They also have a Tyvek filter patch. You see it's about an inch and a half by inch and a half. That's how our grain is going to have a filtered air exchange so that uh, the mushroom inside of it can uh, grow and respirate. 
So we're going to get it opened up. And I usually use just this strainer to pour it in. You can probably figure out a better way. But I've been doing it for so long this way, it's just easy. Of course, it's used all those size. Makes it easier, too. Now we're going to fill this bag up. No more than six inches tall of grain. Which is going to be a little bit more, I think. I always keep a tape measure handy. Uh, I can put it just a little bit more. Now the reason being you don't want to add more is that if you add too much material in your bag you're not going to have enough air exchange through this filter patch for all the mushroom to grow and actually some of it will get suffocated. And uh, the growth will be slow and contamination will be much more of an issue. So we're going to set that to the side. That give you an idea of how tall it should be. I think it actually maybe we can put some more in. A little bit more. If we have a little bit extra, we'll add to that. If you fill the buckets up to the point where I say you're hopefully going to end up with just a tiny bit extra that you can throw out to the birds and the squirrels. But better to have a little bit extra, but not enough. Get as much of the grain as you can. Alternatively, you might think about maybe building yourself a little funnel and hopper to you just dump the grain at the top and put the bag under a chute. That way, you probably don't spill as much as I do. But you know, you're just starting out, so. I'm sure this will be fine. Of course, you don't have to measure every bag. If you know one bag is six inches, you can just compare it to all the other ones. Now, these bags aren't... Uh, exactly cheap if you're buying in a uh, 100 count quantity you're going to be paying about 75 cents a bag but for the quality from uh, fungi.com I, I think they have the best deal and probably the best quality but you know I haven't searched around in a long time I'm sure somebody else is making good ones too for probably even a better price but I buy these in a thousand count quantity where it ends up only being about 50 cents a bag. All right. That might be just a little too much. Nope, we're right on. You see I have a, a little bit left over. Go ahead and dump that in this last one. Let me divide that out. There. See, exactly three bags. So, I have the other kettle ready to go. I'm going to do this for all these. Then we're going to come back. I'm going to show you how to fold these bags up and prep them and get them into these monstrous uh, Model 941 all-American pressure cookers. And of course, you might be using a smaller one, but you're going to be using either this size or the... Uh, we don't have to look up the other model. It'll be the one that only holds four bags. Each one of these will hold a total of six bags. But I'll post all that on the uh, description so you know. All right. Let's uh, let all this get done, and I'll be back. I have all the grain boiled, and now we're going to fold these bags up and seal them down. And what you do, you grab one of these bags, 
and you make sure that the filter is facing away from you. And you're going to want to kind of give it a shake and square it up the best you can too. You want it as, as boxy shaped as possible and as flat on top with the grain. And then we're going to get these gusseted edges in and make sure the crease is good. Fold it in. Now there's a good trick too that you're going to hold it about halfway in pinching it so everything's folded up right and then push the excess air out and pull it up. And that will kind of suck all that extra air space out and give you a nice uh, good fold, not a lot of error in it. Because what's going to happen is you're going to probably do this a few times and it's going to be uh, frustrating because it was frustrating for me too. Uh, getting the folds right so that when you turn it around and have it facing you that you don't see any you know overlapping or it's all bunched up but it's nice and uh, straight and flush together. Now I'm going to take what is a section of a Tyvek painter's suit. It's actually a, a piece of the sleeve I just you know cut off right around here and uh, split the end. And uh, what this is going to be is our filter for the bag. And we're going to slide it in the inside in between the gussets and you want just a tail of it on each end out. I usually kind of push the center in. Now what this filter is going to do is when we pressure cook it it's going to form a vacuum in the bag and to make sure that no contamination can get from you know this point inward this uh, piece of Tyvek sleeve will be good at stopping that and we'll remove it obviously when we inoculate it. Um, also too if you don't use it it'll very, be very hard to open your bag up it'll be so vacuum sealed together that the plastic will be pretty much you know pressed tight against itself and you really have to work at it to peel it apart. So here's the trick to folding all of this. Now that I have it right where I want it and I have it pulled out straight I tend to bring it to my body and kind of hold the top with my chest as I reach down here, roll it over, so there's one fold, and then flip it up again. And I'll do that on another bag to show you. While I have it held right there, I'm going to take some masking tape, fuzzy, and uh, kind of use the tape to pin it. then pull back and tuck any of the filler that's sticking out and also you kind of want to tuck in the the bottom layer of the plastic there because you don't want the you don't want the tape to actually hold the the layers of plastic together you just want to hold the plastic down to the bag cut it off and one bag is ready all right we'll do that again again we're gonna straighten the top Make sure the grain is nice and boxed and flat. Filter is away from you. Get the gusset folds in right. You see here I have a little bit of a uh, bunching I gotta fix. Take another piece of uh, Tyvek. Now you can use any size piece as long as it's doubled up like a sleeve and it's wide enough that it goes and spans past this little interior open area that you see. Now also we're leaving a tail end off out of the bag so that we can grab and pull it out. So you see I'm going to fold it over, I'm going to pin it so the first fold actually ends up right here. So this folds over like that. Hold it. Hold it over again. You want to make sure that the top fold